Okay. Great. Then, then we are headed toward uh, talking about the flesh <clears throat> versus the spirit. Um, and if you'd turn to John 3, 6, please. Where, where we've been talking about is, is to establish, we're working on getting a functional definition going here. The first part of that is the flesh, the sarks, is weak. And we saw at least three different scriptures for that. And so it's we know it's weak. And now well, what we'll be, just so you can see, uh, establishing that God... <clears throat> When he designed man, and this is this is part of what I find just absolutely amazing, he designed man with two choices of how to empower life. You can and and he you think about it now. The flesh is weak. We've established that. Does the flesh have power? Yes. It, the the word weak indicates that it's got at least some power. And what is interesting is God said, uh, you can either live by your power, which I think is an empty receptacle. Okay, that's the flesh. The flesh is an empty receptacle. In and of itself, it has a little bit of power. You want to think of it that way, um, that... It, it is the place where God would reside within man. Okay, now that would be the all in all, but I understand. But 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 I'm saying is, is that he designed a place <coughs> where man would, would receive God. And again, as I said, the, the battle cry of the Sarks is, I will be as God. I will be as God. The sarks by itself is screaming, I will be as God. And if you want to think of, of it as a, a balloon uh, waiting to be filled up with God, that's what it is. But the balloon's power, the, the only power that this balloon has is the power that is inherent in its lining. In other words, in the balloon proper, that's it. That's its power. Uh, if you you took that balloon and uh, you know uh, set it up against some salt and you put it there, nothing's going to happen. Why? Because it's empty. It's it's got its own power. You might be able to brush some of the salt off using it. Again, that's not its power. Um, but it's it's a limited, not blown up balloon. But the balloon itself has some power. The more it gets blown up, though, filled with the pneuma of God, the more power it's got. Because it, it gets bigger and bigger, and the flesh, uh, being stretched, gets what? It's, it's got to be smaller and smaller. Because where, where it was this thick, being blown up, it becomes this thick. Okay? And it... The, the power, or God has given us two choices, and, uh, and we're going to look at, at that in a number of scriptures. The choices, you're either going to live by the intrinsic power that I put in you, the power of the balloon, and mankind walks around in his pomp going, I've got a balloon, uh, worse yet, I am a balloon, and not even a blown up balloon. And we shake our fist at God and go, well, I've got power. Or we can live it the way he designed it, that I've given you a Sarx. It's weak by design. Um, and remember, its battle cry is, I will be as God. You can say you're going to be as God without the pneuma inside the balloon. In which case... 
it profits nothing. It's weak. Or you can turn to God, receive Him, and be filled all in all. And as the, the balloon stretches, more and more power, okay, until you pop and you go to heaven. Um, I'm sorry. I, I, these things come out of my mind, my mind here. Okay, John 3, 6, please. Ms. Davis, mm -hmm. would you read that for us? This is what, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now, <clears throat> that sounds like something I would say. Um, someone called me the professor of the obvious one time. Oh, that's fine. Jesus did it too. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Um, but I, I, I tell you that this is Yeshua speaking for his father. And he is reminded, the, the purpose of this statement is to tell you something. You have two choices. And, it, and it's not that there's a third choice somewhere waiting to happen. There's only two. And <coughs> how am I going to live life? I, I, I don't care what people have accomplished. And, and people accomplish a lot without God. They, they do. They can and they do. Um, somebody that is very driven uh, may accomplish a lot. They may not. May kill them. Uh, there are those people that accomplish a lot, a lot without God. But it's not, I don't think, anywhere near what God would have them accomplish. They could have some great invention, but if again, you, if you think in terms of a person that lives by the flesh almost by definition, only lives for the purpose of the world. And uh, the purpose of the world, if that's all you live for, is meaningless. Um, there are people you'll hear say, well, I, I want to make a difference before I die. Um, and I don't know, try to do something, if, and et cetera. But if, if life has... No meaning. In other words, life simply ends when you end. You've accomplished nothing, and you've gone against your very own philosophy uh, that, that life is meaningless. But yet we're going to help people. Um, talk about an empty life. I, I often, as I've told you before, will see these obituaries, these people, and... Uh, yeah, he lived out his golden years. And I'm going to tell you what about the golden years, folks. You better get it lived when you're young, because when you're old, the golden years hurt. Uh, I'm sorry. That, that, that sounded bitter, didn't it? Uh, anyway, um, golden years. They're lying to you, said my. Uh, Well, at least he lived his life, his golden years, on the golf course. Um, and I'm, I'm always amazed at that. You're, you're kidding. This, is, this person probably thought himself as a big fish in a small pond and was a big deal and had power and money and all that stuff. You usually kind of have to have a little bit of that to live out your days, final days on the golf course. Uh, and died doing what he loved the most. Um, and you, you're going, that, that's it? That, that's life? Uh, we knew a person that was like that in many ways, kind of a bully, a bigger person, physically. And uh, upon their death, I don't know of anyone that has visited their grave at all in, in sorrow. That person got buried and that's it. They're gone. 
a person lied and stole from other people and um, considered himself quite the big deal. And nobody even remembers him now, barely remembers him at all. Life is, if, if this is where you're focused, this, this thing, uh, you get ready for disappointment. Um, either way, we'll move on. The, the flesh it's, is weak. We are not designed, we are not designed. This is one of the reasons why the, the fall uh, <clears throat> uh, is so terrible for us. We, we come up with, with the belief that life, my life, your life, is to be lived by the power of the individual. Well, God gave you common sense. Draw a you know, and you can do this. You can do. We're going to get this accomplished. That is not the way life was designed originally. The Holy Spirit. I'm going to give you a short definition of the Holy Spirit. As we've said before, the Holy Spirit's got a name, and and that name is Emmanuel. It, it, why? Because the Holy Spirit is, what does Emmanuel mean? God with us. Okay, so it's God with us. That is the Holy Spirit. You can look at Scripture, and, and when you study enough of what, that's what it is. And the Holy Spirit originally, I believe, was with man. Why? Because it said so. The Bible said, and then God went, inside the man. He breathed into the man, and the man became not just a soul, but a living soul, okay? And suddenly it's not just, well, there's God's two-legged dog. Uh, no, that wouldn't, well, you know, it was still, that, it, it, there's, there it is, this is two-legged soul. But when God breathed into it, that man became now, I'm a living soul. Well, on the day we ate of rebellion and listened, we lost the living part. I like to say we got the breath knocked out of us. You ever had that happen to you? You fall on, you know, you get the breath knocked out of you. Um, The, we got the pneuma, the Spirit of God knocked out of us. And that was the day we met death. Why? We were separated from life. From that time on, man has continued to do his best to live life by the weakness of the balloon lining, the weakness of the sarks. And, oh, this has got power, and, and it's so pitifully weak. But this is one of the main things I've heard at least one teacher say this was the main thing that that and when you think about it, you have to go, boy, that's sure close to true if it's not completely true. The main thing this person said was to put the Holy Spirit back into mankind. Now you think about that. Would that be the main thing, the main point of Jesus coming to this earth? Could that be so? Of course, if you're Pentecostal or charismatic, you have to go, yes. But I would say you're, you're actually, if you're thinking the way I think you're thinking of it, because I've thought of it that way, um, you're thinking of it wrong, and you're wrong in your belief, because when when Yeshua came to, to earth, do I believe that his purpose, the main purpose, was to put the Holy Spirit back in man? I do. Why? Because that fits everything. That, 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 is, that is everything. Well, but I thought you said that the end of all things Christian was, was Yeshua. 
Come here. Let me rub your head a little bit. Uh, yeah, the Holy Spirit was promised to the body of Christ. And while the body of Christ was on this earth, the Holy Spirit was filling the body of Christ. It's to your own benefit that I go, <laughs> come here, Peter. I'm, I, this is, it's better than, if you love me, I'm leaving. But I've got to tell you something. I, when I go, if I don't go, you're not going to get something. And the something is the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus is all fired over there. So, okay. Um, but wait, I thought you said the end of all things, Christian was agape. Well, um, how, how are you going to love? How are you going to agape? You're not going to do it by the, by the power of your sarks. You see, it was the Holy Spirit in man living the way that the Holy Spirit would live in man that gave the man the ability to agape and to lay down his life for others, etc. And no, 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 it was to free us from sin. I, I'm all for that. Um, let's make it worse. No, 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 so we'd be forgiven of sin. I'm all for that. I, I get it, but you don't get it. There's, there, there's a lot beyond the forgiveness of sin. The forgiveness of sin sets me in right relationship with God to get everything he's been trying to get to me. And that everything is God and man, the way that we were designed to be in the first place. And Yeshua received the promise for us, and then, and then we are able to partake of the, the great and precious promises that, are, that God offered to Yeshua. He received the Holy Spirit for us. We get the Holy Spirit. And... As we've pointed out before, the second time that God blew the Holy Spirit into man, it wasn't just into one guy. And so it had to be a mighty rushing wind. The day of Shavuot, Pentecost, here comes this mighty rushing wind, scares the daylights of everybody in Jerusalem, and uh, out comes 120 drunks. And uh, preaching and people are, are brought in by the power of God's Spirit not by the power of the flesh and the sarks and the way that, unfortunately, mankind in building his religion uh, has said, yeah, we can get it done like that. So Yeshua, yes, he came to get us forgiven of our sins, and yes, he came to uh, give us power over sin, but all of that, going even beyond, of course, the power of the sin is also part of the Holy Spirit, but we, we have to have God with us, living life the way we're supposed to. You were designed, you were designed to have God in you. You were not designed to walk through life without God in you. You were not designed that way. And when who, whoever you're looking at and talking to, we have uh, all fallen short of the recognition of God within us. And, it, and as someone that is, I mean, we, we act like the big deal is, is oh, they, we got to get them saved so they go to heaven. And I'm telling you what, that is not a goal that God talks about. When, when, when you receive the Spirit of Christ and you are of His, you can't die anymore. And when you receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit now, and, and as a Christian, I can attest to this, and I'll give you one of the ways. Uh, the closer I get to God, now this, this may make you go, well, I don't want to go there. The closer I get to God, the longer I live, the more I have to acknowledge and receive 
the fact that in the past, I did A, comma, B, comma, C to other people. I did it. Me. And here's the part you want to go to. And I feel shame. Now, I'm not talking about, oh, I'm embarrassed that I got caught. You know, right now, I, I hadn't been caught. I mean, I have, because it's, it's, it's the reality of who I am. But <clears throat> I finally caught me. I finally looked and got, look at that disgusting human and the stuff that it did. God, how can you stand that? Dear, that's me. Just calm, stay calm. You're okay, God. Don't do anything to it. It's me. I'm the one. And I am ashamed. Well, but I thought that Jesus came to get to get rid of our shame. No. I don't I don't know. I keep hearing that in church. No, I don't. I used to hear that in church. But uh <laughs> and we did. Oh, God doesn't want you to feel ashamed. Don't be so hard on yourself. No. Oh, Thank you, Miss Davis. We used to get that one all the time. We would be we would be giving our testimony. Guess what? We are horrible. We are terrible. We did this and this and this. And Mrs. Davis and I are going, look how disgusting we are. Isn't this wonderful? I mean, you, you remember that line? I, I bring it up every once in a while, and it's a wonderful life. You know, we I don't usually bring up. Okay, here's the movie, but this one that one is, is you know it's it's a wonderful life where where he comes in at the end and he's running into the house and he goes Mary Mary I thought that was interesting huh <laughs> Mary Mary I, I'm going to jail isn't it wonderful isn't it wonderful I'm going to jail oh Mary come here Let, uh. Zulus Zulu Suzu? Suzu's no. petals. Suzu's petals. Suzu's yeah, petals. Yeah. Suzu. Oh, 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 I'm not, I've seen it moved too many times. For the Christian, is it wonderful? I'm, I'm dead. Hey, it's great news, I'm dead. And we would be telling these people, look, we did this, and then, and then... <laughs> God drug us screaming and yelling, at least the male part of us, into his word. And we began to realize that we had done all those things. And then we got excited to finding out we had done all those things because we understood what we were forgiven of. Mm -hmm. And... And he set us free from the requirement that I had in my life to do that again. And they would be, how many times we've heard it? I mean, I have no idea. They'd be looking at you like, well, don't be so hard on yourself. We would start laughing. You incredibly blind idiot. Uh, I've you would say that. <laughs> I'm teasing. <laughs> You know what happened? I'm just telling you. She would go, her part would be, shut up. And I would then say, you incredibly blind idiot. And I would say, Mrs. Davis, that's a deplorable one. Yes. I mean, really, we would laugh and go, what are you talking about? We've already been hard on ourselves by doing the things we're telling you we did. That's when we were hard on ourselves. Admitting it is not that hard. It's simply the truth. May I add something? Yes, I was just, I mean, I was really yeah. in a groove. And just when his law came, we died. If, if people are going, I had this issue and that issue, and you don't prayerfully get them into the Word and to, to truly listen in desperation to God's voice, God's it says the law is perfect, restoring the soul. And it's the instrument of death. And I remember I would have counselors. You know, you can have any excuse for any sin in your life. You can paint it as it's because of them or it's because of this or that. And you can always come up with something. And 
you know, whenever you know God in his kindness shows you something's off. And he brings his law. It works at instrument of death in you. And when God brings conviction, there is life and hope with it. The, the sorrow of the world leads to death. But, and that's what we would have people, oh, don't be so hard on yourself. That's the sorrow of the world. It's going to lead to death. But when God puts you to death by you seeing it through, you know, it's like a, I love how it says the law, the law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the soul. That is where we began to live. That, that I began to go, wow, Lord, it's against you and you alone that we've sinned. David had sinned against all. I mean, a lot of people were affected by his sin. But his, it was all ultimately because it was his, he was off from where God had him to be, wanted him to be. And that is his law brings that death in us. And we see clearly the commandment of, his, of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. We could finally see, oh, and there was hope. The God of hope was in our heart. Yes. And wow, it's, you know, we focus on don't do this, don't do that, don't, all these little sins, and ultimately they're just my independence from God. Yeah. And it's God saying, no, return to me. Return to me. Everything is just return to me. And that's what his law does. It puts to, uh, us to death so that we can return to him and see him be beyond all the stuff in our life. And that's where that single eye on him is what God's after. That is where our hope is. And we had no hope because we were without God. We needed to be aligned rightly with him. And the law came and we died. And it was such a glorious death. So it's the beginning of living for us. So anyway. Really true. Really true. And the shame that I feel, and I do, I feel, I feel that shame is is a is a good godly shame. When it first started, um, it would very much weigh me down. Uh, and and you may be well again, as I said a while ago, I don't want to go there. Go on to some other point. Uh, that was at first, and it's exactly what I needed. I needed to be weighed down with the shame of the fact that I did that. Um, and my memory and, and, and a complete understanding, or, a, or maybe I should say a different understanding. <clears throat> One of the things that the Lord really, uh, uh, again, that he did in me with this is... Once, uh, once the law came and sin became exceedingly sinful, how did it become exceedingly sinful? Was was it not before? Well, in substance, yes. But when I looked at it, no. But now the law has come, and now yes, it's where I used to go. Oh, or I'd blame it on somebody else. And this one was big. Um, and I'm not saying this is you, but I'm, I'm telling you, most, most people that we talk to, and maybe I should say 100% of the people we talk to, the issue behind whatever their issue is. I was talking to somebody last night. I went up on the phone for two hours with this person. And uh, th this person is a, a, a pastor, a friend of ours. And I uh, mentioned to him that behind everything, everything that we, I guess you would say, despise about ourselves or sin that we do or something like this, behind every one of them is unforgiveness. I said it's 100% of the time. I used to, I used to be, again, uh, my interests and a lot of my training was in 
science stuff and and you know I, I, the the job I had was kind of a quasi medical thing, and I, I find that just fascinating the body and how God put it together and all that stuff. But unfortunately for that is I wind up thinking uh, humanistically. I, I wind up thinking naturally, like, like a naturalist. And I don't mean the good naturalist. I mean uh, somebody that believes in naturalism. And so uh, I, it, it's difficult <clears throat> to say 100% this is the way that it is. And I didn't say it for a long time. I finally given up. It won. It won. It, it's whatever you've got going on. Um, now, if if you're less than a year old, you're off the hook, okay? Because there, we're going to go ahead and say it's your will and <laughs> original sin. Um, but after that, uh, it's it's amazing. It's stuff that. You've not forgiven somebody for. Uh, it, it, it's just it's just amazing that that's what it's connected to. And I told this person that, and he he literally on the other end of the phone just gasped and just went, "Oh my goodness, you know what you just." And he realized that's exactly you know when when I because because this guy counsels a lot of people, I said, "Haven't you noted that?" And of course he had, but it hadn't. Hadn't quite clicked all the way in. Well, you heard that rather loud click. Boom. And wow, that's true. It's true. It's true. What I found in my own life, uh, much to my chagrin, was I had become bitter at all of these people that did things to me in my past. And when God opened my eyes, when the law came and the blinders fell off and God's Holy Spirit is shining all of this and everything, and I looked at it closely, it wasn't them. It was me. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Uh, did some friend treat me badly? Some friend stabbed me in the back? And then God would open my eyes, remind me how I treated that fellow. Oh, oh, and I was, the, I was, I was dragging this bitterness along through my life that wasn't real, but the weight was real, the focus was real. The, the problem, though, was not them. The problem was me. And, and let me finish this part up because, as I said, when this, the Lord first began to put this, this feeling of, as, as the law comes in, of shame and, and utter helplessness, which I believe is kind of the way life is supposed to be lived. I say, but I've never had that utter helplessness before. You're looking at yourself and you're going, oh, I'm so ashamed that I did this. I'm totally helpless to do. I'm totally helpless to do anything. I can't do anything about that. I'm completely helpless. It was the shame that was the road that got me to the spot that I needed to get to, which was, you idiot. God wouldn't say that. That's me in the flesh. You're totally helpless. When you understand the totally helpless, the shame is still there. The memory is still there. But that huge weight is not. I can look at that and go, I have, ugh. but what? I, I'm totally helpless to undo the past. What's my job? A person comes up in my life, comes up in my memory. What am I supposed to do? Well, maybe since I'm totally helpless, I might be able to call on the one that supposedly lives inside me and said, this is the way we're supposed to be living life. I'm telling you it is. Will you do something about it? I think both Mrs. Davis and I have discovered something that while we certainly have gotten 
better in our communication skills with one another, uh, I have learned that I just shut up. Just be quiet and everything will be fine. Keep your mouth shut and nobody's going to get hurt. Uh, but really, if, if, if she wants to influence me and I want to influence her, do we go, well, we have open communication and our, our marriage like, you know? And so, no. Father, um, I remember in, at the time of, of the purchase of this place for the Lord, the man that had the money and the power to do it, the Lord came to me and said, I want you to pray that I would go to that person and tell them and, and irritate them about buying the property and buying the school. What? Yep, I want you to ask me to ask them to, okay, that's, okay. And, of course, it was Terry Anderson who gave the school in the first place. Two weeks later, he walked up and said, Mike, do you think that, in so many words, do you think we could buy the school back? <laughs> wow. I mean, you know, ask me to ask him. Two weeks later, he walks in, and I'm, I'm, you know, and after he picked me up off the floor, uh, we could think about that. How am I supposed to be living life? I could have gone and gone, well, you see, I've got to go and influence him. But instead, the Lord said, no, let me do that. Can I say something on that real quick? Please. Yeah, and just... I love that you're tying in prayer with that. Um, it's like as God frees us from the bitterness and the unforgiveness that we hold on to when we, we let it go, um, it just, I don't know, it um, goes into every area of our life. Um, we didn't know that we're, me and Nathan were talking about this earlier, like, I thought I forgive those people. And then all of a sudden something comes up, you know, and you have to, re-forgive them or situations and um yeah it's just cool that you brought up prayer and that is, um, it's that effect we were talking about last week of like god frees us and and then we free other people as we walk in forgiveness and then prayer you know frees them up with god and inviting the enemy over them. and that's the, that's the power going out i mean you can talk to them and you do your words have power they do but they're the flesh, so therefore it's weak. Um, this, um, this is one of the things I think we, we assume that we're ready. Okay, well, we'll don't, don't worry about doing this for a while here. Um, and again, what, what does the flesh do? The, the flesh considers itself powerful. Now, if I go to Mrs. Davis and, and uh, uh, and say, uh, you know, I, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've not spent uh, $10,000 on me lately. And... Uh, I need a new set of Illin pipes. Um, and that is absolutely not a subtle hint. Um, 71, I don't need another set of Illin pipes. Um, the first set defeated me. Uh, all I've done is get her permission. I want you to hear what I'm saying here now. All I've done is gained her permission, which she would probably do, and I would go, why are you doing that, Mary? We don't have $10,000. Look at what you've done. Uh, that woman you gave me. All I've done is gotten her consent. But if I pray to Father, I've gotten her agreement. 
Yeah, there's so many things that when we both, like he's thinking this is the way, and or I may be thinking this, I think this is the direction we always come together, but it's like the Lord unifies us in knowing this is God's direction when we pray. It's just the difference. In and then just, it will happen. Will, will. What did you think? And, you know, well, you know, we're, well, we're talking about this. Well, well, did you, what did you think about this? And invariably, she will say what I thought, or I will say what she thought. It's funny. Someone was talking to me the other day about a, a particular matter, and they knew that I was going to be resistant to it. And this was a good thing that was going on. It wasn't anything bad because if it was been bad. I certainly would have been all for it. Um, but <laughs> this this person said, and I'm letting you know, my wife and I came up with this idea separately. Now, what did he just do? He just hit me with a baseball bat. I just had to laugh and I went, fine. I can't argue with that one. Why? Because his wife was involved? No. Because this was a Christian couple and they had agreed, and God had spoken to them separately. I mean, I knew what he was talking about, what we, just, we were talking about right there. This is what happened. We came up with this idea both separately, and when we spoke it out, that's what I was thinking too. That's not just, I mean, this is not just coincidence. Oh, you know how the other person is going to think, et cetera. Uh, That's how I got tricked into buying that mini. <laughs> yeah. No. I no. Won't tell that story. <laughs> that, that, that mini was. That mini, God had to convince me to take it. That's right. Now, see, that's right. Yeah. I felt like God wanted me to give her that as as a gift, and I had to fight to get her con convinced to take the, it. The night before we got it, because I was laying there, I thought, I don't. I don't need a mini, Lord. I have the white car out there, and it runs fine. And I drove to Walmart the next morning, and the car broke down on the way back. And I said, okay, Lord, I'll take the mini. And I, all right, I, all right. I get the me message, and that day we bought the mini. I just, it had never, it had only broken down on me one other time. And all the years we had had it, and that happened. I thought, okay. I was convinced that this was of the Lord. So. Pretty funny. <laughs> and a lot of fun, too. Uh, uh, it was a lot of fun. And God helped us get the money back that we paid for it. Just barely. I don't remember. Yeah. It yeah. was so basically, a few hundred dollars less than what we originally less. paid for it. Yeah. Tim. Yeah. I like this. So we've definitely experienced that. But what you're talking about is... For the individual, the whole power for living is dependence upon God. For, for living life, life for at, living. at the plane, and, and again, uh, around here, I have to remember to put these kind of things in there. It's not living life because mankind looks at living life as bios. Right. You know, did, did I wind up with a lot of money? Did I play fun games? Did I have a lot of big boys' toys when I died? All that junk. But that's bios. God doesn't want to live, live on the level of bios. He wants Zoe, which is up here, differently than ever. But anyway, go ahead. <coughs> yeah. That can only be done by dependence upon the Lord. Right. But what you're talking about here is it's not just for the individual, it's also for the married Because the married couple is one flesh. Are they one? They're but one. They the one in Sarks. Yes. That's right. Ark, but it needs a, de a mutual dependence upon the Spirit of the Lord in order for it to be so like, what God intended it to be. So anyway, at, like I, we've experienced that. Yeah. And there's a power when we both submit to the Lord versus we're pulling on each other. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's the same as the individual, but also in the couple. We need it's for him, it's for his um, spirit to dwell in. Yeah, that's true. And Tim, I need to tell you, it only gets worse.
Today, it's a new set of towels. Tomorrow, it's a mini. So just... <laughs> Mine. I've never bought you a new set of towels that I know of. Frank is afraid of the Lord to get them. No. <laughs> um, it's real funny, though, but you're, you're right. That's the way it works. Uh, when we become one, one flesh, and especially, how do we become one flesh? <clears throat> in the Lord. And when we're one flesh in the Lord, um, then it's not just she and I involved anymore. And you don't want what the Lord wouldn't want. You know, that's the thing is if you're if you're abiding in him, you don't want what he doesn't want for yeah. you. I remember in this we were gonna go on a trip and it used to be that we would just go, Well, we need to get away. We need to have some time away and stuff because we were immature and in where we were in the Lord. And um I remember the summer that we said we could go somewhere. But we stopped and wait, wait. We don't want to just go somewhere just to go somewhere. God, we want your direction. And we waited and we said, God, you make it clear. We wanted to go west and we wanted to go northwest. But we wanted God's direction. And within 24 hours, someone called and said, would you come to Portland and do a conference? God made it clear. because, And we also, in that prayer, is we want it to be about the kingdom. So we got our vacation, our time away, but it was for the kingdom's purpose. And it's just, there was such a difference in that than just going to go for the sake of going, which had been the norm of, you know, you can reason anything in your mind. We, oh, we need this. You know, God wouldn't say, he knew what we needed, but he provided not only just a wonderful trip, but it was everything that he wanted to happen. It was wonderful, and uh, it was about the kingdom. Um, I think every place we stopped, it seemed like every hotel, someone we had an opportunity to talk about the Lord and give the Facebook away. Every place we went. Now, I am serious now. We are, <clears throat> this, this was everywhere we went. Something would come up very quickly. It just seemed like, it. it, it was like, Okay, you can go see this, but you need to be ready. On on top, how many of you have ever been to Rocky Mountain National Park? <laughs> okay. Rocky Mountain National Park has the highest <laughs> continuous highway in North America. It's, it's an entire highway, and I don't know what the final, I don't remember it, uh, what it is. It's over 10,000 feet, um, and there's still peaks that are up, up around you, you know, and Rocky Mountain High is, uh, is, is high, and uh, we're up on top of this mountain and it's it's a place where you could stop and pull out and there's the the elk down there and sleeping and you know all this other stuff and the wind was blowing a lot harder than that and i found myself standing outside the car talking to a man about keeping and kind of give you a, a copy of this book we'd be thrilled to have that um, we're sitting under the gaze of Washington, Jefferson, uh, T.R. Who's the other one that's up there? Lincoln, yeah. yeah. I was thinking it had to be Trump, but that's... that's yes. <laughs> yeah, it's coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's, there's something with a rock on top of the others, you know. So, um, anyway... We're we're standing there and wind up in this conversation with this couple, and next thing you know, we're talking about keeping. They wound up being a, a Christian couple, and they're giving them a book and or a couple of books and wandering off. It, it it happened everywhere we went. 
the, the hotel, one of the hotels that we wound up in, uh, a pastor that was struggling with, with life, he had some physical things going on with him, and wound up having a, a very long conversation. With, it went on and on and on and on and on because the focus was not on us. And the third person agreed, yeah, y'all can go. And it wasn't about us getting away. Go ahead. Even in a restaurant, there was this lesbian couple talking across the aisle to another couple because it was a Sunday and they were talking about going to church and stuff. And when we got to the car, the Lord brought it to mind, go give them a Facebook. So I went back and I said, I heard y'all talking about the Lord. It was so encouraging and, you know, whatever. I said, and I said, I wanted to give you a book about, you know, relationship with the Lord. And they took it. And I just, you know, it was like every place we had, there was some place to share the Lord with people and pass out the Facebooks. We had taken, I think, a case, case of them, something like that. But it was just, it was, yeah, encouraging because our focus was not our R&R, &R, how you say it. And, um, but That's it was, correct. Yeah, the Lord, you know, giving us that opportunity to share Him with other people. Yeah. Um, amen. Like I said, uh, when the Lord brought that about, there was great joy in it rather than, okay, we're just going to make this happen. We're in agreement, okay? We were in agreement with Him rather than, okay, we got permission to do that. So often we'll settle for the the cheap imitation uh, that the Sarks brings about. So, uh, 